All right, hello everyone and welcome to Total Laker Live presented by Winfield United. Uh, today we're going to be talking about fertilizer prices. So number one, why are they so high? And two, what implications and, and tools should a grower consider in their 2022 fertilizer plans? Uh, my name is Carl Stenerson. I'm a senior market analyst for Winfield United Crop Nutrients. I'm joined virtually here by my colleague, Randy Brown. Randy, would you like to uh, introduce yourself? Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Randy Brown. I'm an agronomist with Winfield United. Thanks, Randy. Glad to have you here and looking forward to hearing your expertise on the uh, agronomy side of things. So before that, I'll start us off with an overview of uh, kind of where fertilizer prices are today and, and go through why they are so high. Um, so for those of you watching, if you have any questions, please enter them in the chat and we'll uh, make sure to address them as they as they come up or, or at the end. Um, but yeah, with that, we'll dive into our, our first slide, first slide here that we'll share with you. Um, that was the second slide, but here's the first one. Uh, just looking here at kind of long term price chart for uh, ammonia DAP and potash going back to 2007. Off the bat, you can see ammonia uh, skyrocketing up there at $400 a ton. This is just a Midwest wholesale price. Um, that is a record high and other nitrogen products, urea and UAN not pictured on here, but some of those have also made record highs of their own uh, this year. Um, phosphates and potash looking at really high levels, obviously up considerably year over year. Uh, but if you do look back to 2008, 2009, we, we have had these types of high prices before for those products. Um, but, you know, overall, if you're looking at kind of, uh, you know, fertilizer expenses year over year, uh, because of these higher prices, your, your bill's probably going to be at least double what it was uh, at this time last year. Um, albeit, albeit, you know, uh, last year we had fairly low fertilizer prices, but, um, you know, going into kind of the why behind all of this, um, you know, for fertilizer, I think you gotta, you gotta kind of back out and remind yourself that we're talking about a, a global commodity market here, uh, where the price is set globally based on a lot of different supply and demand factors. Um, and then depending on what's going on in the global market, that will kind of determine the price that you'll see, um, you know, at, at the U.S. Gulf for, for those import prices, and then that will feed all the way into your local price uh, that you see from your retailer. So um, just putting that into perspective here, you know, here are some of the high level kind of supply and demand factors across the fertilizers without going into the nuances of each product too much. Here's kind of some common things that are that have factored into these uh, high prices. Um, starting off just number one, commodity price boom. Um, commodities for all types of things, metals, uh, energies are all, are all higher right now, um, including, you know, fertilizer and grains. So that's part of it is just the, the rising tide has kind of been lifting the, uh, lifting all boats. Um, number two, probably the biggest one, in my opinion, high grain prices and strong global fertilizer demand. We've seen application rates and crop plantings increase all across the globe, increasing fertilizer demand. I mean, really tightening up the supply and demands. Uh, three black swan, uh, black swan weather events. Um, you know, looking at North, North America here, we had the uh, winter storm Uri that came through in February and knocked about a dozen nitrogen plants off offline for multiple weeks. That really tightened up uh, our supply heading into a spring season, which had good demand. Uh, that winter storm was really unlike anything we've we've ever seen before. Um, but then we also had a, a hurricane, uh, Ida, that hit the U.S. Gulf in September that knocked off a couple fertilizer plants. That didn't help as well. Um, another major factor uh, compared to last year is much, much higher global natural gas prices. We're, we've seen record high natural gas prices in areas of uh, Europe and Asia. Um, natural gas is the major component for nitrogen manufacturing. It accounts for, you know, 70 to 90 percent of of cost to uh, produce a ton of nitrogen product. Usually you've got to, you need at least about 33 MMBTUs uh, to produce a ton of ammonia. Right now, prices in Europe are above $30 per MMBTU for natural gas, much, you know, 25 plus dollars higher than what they are here in the US. And it's those plants that have had to shutter production and turn off plants 
um, and reduce kind of the supply side of this fertilizer, nitrogen fertilizer equation uh, due to the, the rising and rising natural gas prices. Lastly, we've got uh, geopolitical factors and changes in trade policies. These are always kind of the wild cards, and I could you know, make a presentation on this topic all on itself. But uh, to name a couple of the main factors here, looking at the U.S., we've got new uh, tariffs on phosphate products from uh, Russia and Morocco. Um, that's kind of handicapped our ability to import uh, phosphate here into the U.S., and we've also got an ongoing uh, trade investigation into UAN from Russia and Trinidad, uh, which is really, uh, you know, putting a lot of uncertainty in the market on where we're going to get those UAN or where's the nitrogen going to come from if we can't get it um, from these these countries due to uh, trade policies, um, new trade policies. But another major factor uh, is uh, countries like China, who are major exporters of both in the phosphate and nitrogen uh, markets. They put an export ban on this year to focus on their domestic market. That's really tightened up the global S&D without China uh, participating in the export market and has significantly increased prices since they instituted that for uh, for urea and, and uh, DAP and MAP specifically. So um, if you got, uh, let's see if we've got any questions come in here. I'll stop sharing my screen for a second. Okay, great. We got some questions coming in. Uh, we've got Savannah buyers. When will fertilizer prices come back down? Um, yeah, I get that question a lot. I think what, what, especially when we're talking about record high prices. I mean, I always bring up two two thousand eight, two thousand nine, right? Because that's really the only comparable years. Obviously, uh, most of us remember prices crashed significantly very hard after shooting up high. I think what's different, a little bit different this time around, um, you know, the, the economy is is looking pretty, pretty, it's looking okay. I guess there is con concerns with the global economy a little bit, but, you know, last time we dove into a, a recession as a result of the housing crisis, that doesn't seem like a realistic expectation at this time. Um, and then also grain prices went down significantly um, in 2008, 2009. So we saw a lot of demand destruction. That doesn't seem likely this year, given our outlook for, you know, stable, stable grain prices remaining pretty high, at least through the next crop season. So um, I, I do think, I will say fertilizer prices at the wholesale level seem like they've gotten to a peak. Um, but if we're talking about retail pricing, um, I think there's probably still some more upside in the near term. I think you could see some some weakness in, in pricing by by come springtime, um, but but there's really not going to be a big pullback. We do expect prices to pull back significantly by a couple hundred dollars a ton, most likely. It's just not going to happen this spring. It's more it's it's probably going to not going to happen until summer at the earliest, at, at least at the retail level. Um, uh, one more question here, I guess I'll take uh, from from Terry Lynn Boudreaux. How has COVID affected the supply chain of fertilizer and nutrients? Um, I think um, that's that's a good question. It, it hasn't been as drastic as maybe some of the other crop inputs, I would say. Um, but one of the bigger impacts we've seen is higher global freight rates for fertilizer. They're about double what they usually are. Um, that has come back down in recent months a little bit. Uh, but the other thing has been kind of the at the plant level for these fertilizers. Last year, because of COVID restrictions, there wasn't a lot of turnarounds going on um, because these, these companies and plants wanted to limit the amount of workers they had coming in. So they push, pushed off all these turnaround activities last year into this year. So we've essentially seen double the amount of turnaround work, which is double the amount of plant downtime we would see in a normal year. Uh, this year. And so production has really been lacking. And that's holds true, not just for the US, but on the global level as well. So uh, good questions. Uh, with that, I'll conclude my part on why, you know, fertilizer prices are high and, and pass it over to Randy here. Uh, Randy's gonna yeah, go through. I'm excited to hear, you know, what, what how you can uh, frame this up uh, and, and take it to a grower, grower level and what considerations they should be taking because of these higher prices. 
Thanks, Carl. That was some really good information. One of the major questions we're getting out in the field is, what am I going to do about my crop inputs this year because of uh, costs? There's really two issues. One is that commodity prices are high uh, as far as our, our corn price. So we want to make sure we're optimizing yield, but also fertility is going to be the largest input that we have into our crop this year. So the place to start is with a good soil test. We've talked about this for a lot of years, but we've got to measure before we can manage. And so starting with a soil test, if we're looking at phosphorus and potassium, we've had a good uh, program in the past. We've got a little flexibility there. So maybe we shift some of those dollars short term for a year in order to uh, to shift that maybe to our nitrogen budget. So we have some flexibility. I'm going to talk about nitrogen because that's the one that this year I think we're going to have to take a little time and get some right. We're going to have to apply the agronomics we know. Uh, we know what happens if we get caught short of nitrogen. We have a significant effect on yield. So being able to calculate what is the right rate this year is really important. One of the things to remember that a lot of our nitrogen is taken up fairly late in the growth stage. We still have a significant amount of nitrogen, about 70%, left to be taken up uh, when we hit tassel stage there. So not only is it a rate, but a timing. So one of the ways we can gain some efficiency out there is maybe some split applications, some later applications. We know that nitrogen is susceptible in the environment to uh, some losses. So understanding when corn uh, takes up nitrogen is going to be really key. The other thing is knowing your genetics and with our answer plot data, whether it be our cropland brand or our partners, we have a response to nitrogen score. What that will help us do is prioritize fields where we need to make sure that we have enough nitrogen out there. If we have a high uh, response to nitrogen score, that's one we want to make sure that we're on the top end of that nitrogen rate that we've calculated. If we want to have one that's medium to low, Maybe we have a little bit of room uh, to adjust there and, and shift those nitrogen dollars uh, someplace else. One of the things I think will be very useful this year is our tissue sampling, our Nutrisolutions program. Again, we can't ma ma monitor, we cannot manage what we don't measure. And having a assessment of plant tissue of where that plant is, not only with nitrogen, but other nutrients is really going to help us with the uh, efficiency uh, in there. We know that there's some relationships with nitrogen to potassium and sulfur. So if we have an issue where we're short of potassium, we're not going to be efficient with our, our nitrogen. We're not going to move it to the growing point. We're going to have an effect on yield. So within Nutrisolutions, we have some ratios that we would like to uh, stick to, and we have some recommendations. So we want to have that nitrogen to potassium ratio somewhere around 1.4 to 1, uh, nitrogen potassium to 1.1 to 6. Same thing with sulfur. Uh, we know that sulfur is needed in order to take that nitrogen converted into protein. If we're short of sulfur this year, we're not gonna use that expensive nutrient as efficiently and we're gonna have an effect on yield. So somewhere in between that 10 to one to 15 to one nitrogen sulfur ratio is really where we wanna be. We wanna make sure we're optimizing our nitrogen out there this year. Another uh, piece that we have to uh, manage this is our field forecasting tool. This is a weather-based forecasting tool that calculates mineralization. It'll calculate predicted yield, and it will actually monitor your nitrogen uh, throughout the, the season. It is based off from tissue sampling. So if we take a tissue sample, we will be able to, uh, to uh, change our, our recommendations. The key to this really is understanding what the optimum nitrogen rate is and making sure that we're getting not, not only the right rate, but the right time. Field forecasting tool uh, will help you uh, do that. Great. That's, that's great information, Larry, or Randy, excuse me. Um, with, you know, nitrogen prices at, you know, a dollar per unit of nitrogen, call it, you know, it just makes more and more sense to make sure you're applying at the most efficient rate and, uh, you know, and also just protecting that nitrogen as well. Yeah, so stabilizers are going to be big this year. So uh, with the price of nitrogen, we want to make sure when we put it out there, we have that nitrogen stabilized so we're not losing that. That's a pretty expensive loss. The other thing is this is a year to dust off all our agronomics. This is where we sharpen our pencil and make sure that we get a good ROI for that grower. Absolutely. So 
I don't see any other uh, questions. Uh, so uh, if, if, if there's no other questions, I wanna thank everybody for being here today. If you need more information, just uh, our tickers on the bottom, visit uh, winfieldunited.com and you can get in touch and answer any questions. All right, thank you. Thank you.